I'm going to go over the answers to the 2.2 quick check. So the first question on here is talking about states of matter, and it says, okay, here's some pictures, and identify the state of matter in each sample and provide an explanation why we think that. Okay, so uh, sample A, okay, to me, these all look like, okay, something like, um, this is obviously a solid, okay, and this guy's a gas, and this must be a liquid. Okay, so sample A is liquid. And that's because all the particles are close together. But they're not lined up in rows. They're a little bit random. So that's why I know that it's a liquid, so those particles are passing, going past each other. You can also see just slightly there's little red lines, okay, showing that there's some motion there, just kind of moving past each other. Okay, sample B. Sample B, I would say, is a solid. And again, I would say that they're close together. But these are, are in rows, nice rows. And that little crystal structure there lets me know that that's a solid. Okay, the last one here must be a gas. And that's because they have a lot of uh, room spaced out. And in random motion. as you know, indicated by all the little arrows that are in there. But again, all of them actually have random motion, but the spacing out of these is really the obvious part. Okay. For the second part here, metals and non-metals. So one thing, remember that if you look at the periodic table, okay, we can draw a line, okay, again, hydrogen over here, hydrogen's a non-metal, but if we do this little line here, starting at boron and just kind of go stair steps, then these guys over here, these are the non-metals, okay, and including hydrogen. And everybody else is the metals. So most of the things on the periodic table are actually metals. So what do we know about metals? Okay, conduct electricity, that's definitely a metal. Dull in appearance, that's a non-metal, because metals are shiny. Form positive ions, okay, metals form positive ions, because they're on the left side, they lose their electrons easily found on the right side of the periodic table. Okay, those are all our non-metals. Have elements in all three states. Okay, well that one actually is non-metals. Okay, because metals only have um, mostly solids and then there's liquid mercury. Malleable. Malleable means that you can pound it into thin sheets and that's what you can do with a metal. Okay, non-metals would be brittle. Okay, the last one here, identify the group each element belongs to. And we're talking about the families and groups on the periodic table. So this, you have to kind of say, well, where are they on the periodic table? So I've taken these four and actually circled them. So here's strontium. Okay, we see where strontium is. We have to know that that is the alkaline earth metal family. And be careful on this one because... The first column over here, those are the alkali metals, alkali, but these are called the alkaline earth, so it's pretty close. Okay, manganese, we can see manganese here. Okay, this whole group here, those are called the transitions. Okay, they're all metals, so transition metals. Okay, bromine way back over here, bromine, okay, that's one of the halogens. Halogens, and that's the same thing as in a halogen light. <clears throat> they have some halogens in there to help keep the front portion of the glass nice and clean so they can run the uh, uh, things at a higher temperature and get brighter light. Okay, krypton is one of these guys over here. Okay, krypton's a noble gas. Okay, the seven diatomic elements. Okay, the seven diatomic, here's hydrogen. Here's nitrogen, oxygen, 
fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. So those are the seven diatomic elements. And you might notice that it's hydrogen, and the other six make a, like a picture like a seven. Okay, starting with element number seven. So that's how I remember that. Or you can put the names together and it spells Honkelbrief. And that's the quick check.